What's up, Florida gang? I'm going to start us off with number 10. Number 10, I'm going to go with Tyrese Maxey. My sweet Tyree, baby boo. Love Tyrese Maxey. Big factor here is age 23 years old, and he's just became an all-star. And to me, even a bigger sign is just the leap. Not only that, did he come in to the league as like a star, which he kind of did underratedly, but just like the ability to take on different roles and just thrive, just like being able to grow, being able to learn, it's just that mindset. And I just, I think he would be an amazing player to build around right now, but even more so, like if I'm looking to sign somebody, looking to pick my guy, he's, I think, number 10 on my list. So young and so, so much potential and so much flexibility. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't quite make my list. Uh, I, I think it's mostly just because. I mean, I think he's you know he's awesome. He's the seventy sixers point guard of the future. He's going to be a max contract player. Um, obviously he's going to be an all star for years to come. But I, I just think he doesn't have enough, like versatility, uh, positionally and like defensively. I mean, he's a good defender for his size and everything. But, um, to be like a top ten player, I would want to build around. It just doesn't quite that fill, fit that bill for me. My number 10 is going to be a rookie. Uh, it's not the rookie you're thinking of. It's Chet Holmgren, um, a defensive beast. Obviously, he's insanely uh, versatile for a big, um, and I feel like he fits on any team, really, because he could play the four or the five. Um, not the best rebounder, but he's he's improving. He's improved throughout the year. Solid passer. Obviously, great shooter for his size can attack closeouts, you know. I think he's just the perfect, you know, five slash four, and he could fit on pretty much any team. Um, obviously, I don't think he's, like, he's not, the, like, quite the generational talent like Victor is, but I think he's he's definitely got the superstar potential that you need. Yeah. Uh, I don't I mean, he didn't make my list. Maxi didn't make my list either. I love both cool. guys. Uh, I feel like Maxi is still – just in terms of someone to build around, I think he's great and stuff. But just with some of the guys that are out there, I don't think he's my top 10 just because of the inconsistencies he still has. Hopefully they get fixed. But I feel like right now, the way just when you look at him, he doesn't seem to be quite as good when he doesn't have that star player, in this case, Joel Embiid, to help him out. Um, I love Maxi. Future is bright. But just based off what I can see right now from guys in the NBA, he just didn't make my top 10. Um and Holmgren, I think he just, I don't know, he just doesn't seem like that leader guy for a team to me. He's a great player too, but I feel like he's not that guy to really lead a team, uh, to be the leader on a team. Uh, my 10, I I honestly, my list is, it's, it seems whack, but I'm going to, I have Steph at my 10. Um, he's, mm. he's a great player. Uh, he can do things, he can do a lot of things by himself. He doesn't necessarily need too much talent around him but i think he's also a great leader and uh obviously he can play really well with a lot of different guys uh he can play well by himself uh if his guys aren't doing too great so i think he would be a really good guy to start a team around he, w he would be if he wasn't 35 years old i mean yeah. if i'm given the task to win one championship and i take my five I, i'd rather take my uh my 17 years with Tyrese Maxey than I would the five with, with Curry. If I can build a team around e either one, I mean, that's all I'm saying. I mean, it, it just a lot more time to do it. Um, and, and like even, even Chet Holgram, I mean, I, I still think Maxey over Chet Holgram. I don't think, like Marvin said, I don't mm -hmm. think Chet's, I don't think Chet's a one. I just don't think he's a one. I think he's awesome but to build around. He's in a different system. I wouldn't see him in a different role, but maybe I'm wrong. He's, I mean, he's got a lot of potential. But if both those guys, at least you have that time and you can build a like, team around them, give these each other. And we know Curry has done it. That's so how people are going to, you know, hate on what I'm saying right now for that. Like, oh, but Curry's done it. He can also win one next five. I'm sure he could. I'm sure he could. But I, I take my time with uh, 17 years of Max and trying to perfect a roster around him. Yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting, like, because obviously I don't think Tyrese Maxey will ever be Steph Curry level. It could be wrong. But, uh, I mean, yeah, would you rather, like, you're going to be – or I guess you're not even guaranteed to be a contender because look at the Warriors right now. But, like, 
like if you have Steph Curry, you have a significantly better chance than like, oh, oh like besides like five other guys in the league to be like top tier, you know. And he like he can be the number one on the team, but I just think that even five years is kind of generous. He's thirty five, you know, and we've only seen one player really ever have the type of longevity that LeBron has had. Um, I mean, I think I'm sure Steph could do it because he doesn't rely on athleticism a ton, but it's still a big what if, you know. So, so I, I mean, obviously Steph is still a top ten player. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose him from my. Head. My number nine is none other than John Morant. He's mm. a shooter off the court, not so much on the court, but yeah, yeah. as young as he is, and only twenty four years old, and if he's healthy and not doing things that keep him off the court. He's for, for one, the Grizzlies are as good as a team and just the way that they've already built around him. And I think they could still do a better job of building around his skill set. And I mean, what, what they did in the playoffs against the Lakers, him banged up and just several other injuries, like that just, just a big of uh, like kind of booster John Moran. Like he maybe should be higher up my list. Okay. I definitely think he's on this list. Maybe he should be higher, but he's at least number nine. He put up, what, a 40-point triple-double or something like that against the Lakers in the playoffs? Like, if I'm building off someone, you know, got six, if he played until 40, I got 16 years or so of this guy, I'm, I'm going to be pretty – I'm going to be in good shape with John Moran. There's not too much he can't do, and I think he, if you put the right pieces around him, he's – you'll really he's, – he's the kind of guy that can make things click. Yeah, I, I like that a lot, that pick. Um... I have a sophomore, maybe, is this a third year, maybe? I have Paulo Bancaro at number nine. Um, I've liked what I've seen from him uh, his first couple of years. Uh, he's started becoming a lot more, or not a lot more, but a very capable playmaker as well. He can get rebounds. Um, we've seen he can show up in the clutch on offense. Uh, even his defense uh, isn't anything of a liability as well. Super young as well. So I like Paulo Bancaro. Uh, if I if I'm picking someone to build around, uh, he's definitely one of the top guys I would take. Paulo is also my nine. Uh, I think he nailed everything on the head and everything he struggled with in his regular uh, in his rookie season. I mean, he has he's really improved in his sophomore year, um, and I'm sure he's going to keep improving on them. Like his three point shot, you said defense, playmaking's gotten better. Um, but to speak on Jaw for a second, he didn't make my list because uh, of two reasons. You said the off court, off the court stuff. I I want to believe that it's all over, and I think it. I think there's a good chance it is. I think he's learned. I think he's mm-hmm. improving. But he gets injured for like a significant stretch every year, and it's gotten like longer every year. And we've seen this with the. I mean, only like a few athletic point guards like Russ. He's been an Ironman his whole career, but he's also built. You know, like the length, the length, the what am I trying to say? The skinnier. Uh, quicker shift to players like D Rose, Ja, John Wall, they've always struggled with injuries. Um I think Ja in terms of talent is definitely one of the guys that you would look at, but I and just looking at the list that I have right now, I'm not convinced that he's better than he's probably better he's definitely better than Chet. And I think he could be at number one score, much more capable than Chet. But otherwise, I think I'd confidently take these other nine over him. I mean, honestly, you made a really, really good point. But Chet over Ja as a guy to build around just a tough one. I mean, I mean, I, I guess, I guess Chet, Chet also has a history of being injury prone. He missed his rookie year, but he's he's played every game this year too. So I got to do true. That. But I mean, I was looking at John Morant's gameplay games played throughout his season too. I mean, obviously this year it's only nine, but before that he was averaging sixty-two games played a year in four seasons, which Obviously, you want a few more games from your star player, but that's still right around that uh, NBA award range now that we have with 65 games, which I think is really good. Uh, I mean, he definitely is an injury-prone type player, too, just in the sense of some of the things he does on the court, just with, like, uh, trying to get highlights and stuff. He definitely does have a bit of a – or tends to do riskier things like that sometimes – so that I could see that being an issue, but based off the history, it hasn't been too bad until this season where it was just really unfortunate. But I mean, I like John Morant, and I have him at my eight, which I guess we can move on to that. Uh, so 
like Lauren said, I have him at eight, just one more uh, than you. Same things, really, really great player, great athlete, uh, can do a lot of things on the floor, very talented at every aspect on the court. Deacon, I want to hear your number eight first. My number eight is Harry Salomon. Um, the best passer in the game, I would say. Uh, fish and three-point shooter. Um, I'm not sure how much more he has to go, just because he's already so good. Um, but right now, I think he could uh, – and depending on his supporting cast, which right now is solid, but it could get better. Mm -hmm. Still not a lot of defense around him. Miles Turner has turned up on defense lately, but um, not a lot of defense around him. The shooting's – uh, it's solid around him. I, I I think the Pacers could get better, and once they do, I think it will be like, like what we saw in the the uh, what's it called the in season tournament or the NBA Cup, I guess what it's called now. I think I think he could sustain that for a long period and like in a playoff run. I think he just needs more consistent talent around him, and that's why I didn't get traded Buddy Hill at that because he was like arguably their second best offensive player this year. Um. Uh, besides Pascal, but yeah, so I hear like everything you're saying. I agree with everything you're saying, and you know I have him higher on my list. You know Marvin has him higher on his list, and this makes me wonder. So why is he not higher on your list for a guy to build around? If you're saying like he's got okay shooting, did they need better defense? If they were better at these things, he would be amazing. Yes, you, if you were building on a guy, you could do that. You could build that team around that he needs. I guess y'all just have to see. You know? Oh All boy, right. uh, we're coming back to this if we need to. But I, I'll go number eight. I'll keep it. I'll keep it fiery. Joel Embiid is my number eight. Um, mm. In large part, the age factor of twenty nine. If he was twenty two years old, I'm sure he would be in my top three or my top five at least. He's twenty nine years old. Um, with very limited playoff success. Also, in large part due to injuries that happen in playoffs regular season. Even if he is playing, he'll often play wobbled. Uh, I've been a, cri a critic, obviously, for a long time of his of his like kind of higher IQ play style in the playoffs, which is, I blame in large part his lack of success in the playoffs for. And he's gotten really good this year, but he is now 29, and he is also currently out. So that's why I'm picking. If I had to build a player right now, I'd feel player to build around. He's number eight in the list for those very factors, but. Yeah, I think he's he's got a really good chance here still. If, they, if the Sixers kind of stay the way they're built right now, and that he can just stay healthy, I think it's only a matter of time before he, they make several finals run and maybe even take home a championship. But they they can be up there if they're healthy. And then he's playing very high IQ basketball, and he's fixing mistakes that he makes. Or he's he's getting better. And that's very very important, especially to be on this list. You're gonna. I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. He was. He didn't make my list either. Um, he is like you said. He's 29. I so I've been Joel Embiid's biggest supporter throughout the Flutter Gang uh, era. You know, uh, I I think he's he's been he's he's underperforming the playoffs, but I don't think it's all his fault. I think there's a lot of outside factors that influence that, but. Like you said, injuries. He's twenty nine, and it just happens every year. And he and he his play does decrease in the playoffs. And I just I question because every year it happens where he gets injured. And I mean, so talent wise, talent wise, he was the best player in the league this year. He's probably going to win the unanimous MVP if he didn't get hurt, you know. But I, I just I like if I'm building a team, if I'm choosing someone, I'm not going to pick Joel Embiid, no matter how good he is, because he gets hurt. Every year, and he chokes in the playoffs every year. Like I can't justify that, you know. It's very valid points, actually. Um, unfortunately, I mean, honestly, after hearing that, I was kind of thinking about even taking him off, but it's kind of hard now. Um, I did have him on my seven, though. But I mean, you have very good points. We haven't seen anything necessarily from him, and like you said, I mean, he's he's twenty nine, so he has older. So at this point. It would be really nice to see him either stay healthy at least or perform in the playoffs. Hasn't really been able to do either one of those. Um, obviously this year he's just, his injuries are probably the worst they have been this year, which also could even factor into the future of him too. Is will this be a prolonged kind of injury or will this be hey once he gets through this he he'll be fine? 
Um, so that's yeah. that's a curious thing to look into as well. But I'm pretty sure it's his knee, so that could very uh easily be a prolonged injury. But like I said, I do have him at my seven just because of the pure talent that he has played with as well. Um, yeah. hopefully now with new coaching as well with Maxi, uh, being being there as well, being a a lot of a a lot of an elevated player this year. Hopefully they can do something a lot better this year and show them. Show all NBA fans, especially the Sixers fans, that they can make it to the finals, uh, whether it's this year, next year or two, just with what they have. That'd be amazing to see. But yeah, because of that, just because of the pure talent still, I, I do have them at my seven. Uh, my number seven is I'm going to the number one seed, I think it's the R in the West, Anthony Edwards. We've talked about before, likely future MVP at least candidate, if not award winner. He's still so young. He's, I think, what, 23? He's 22. He's 22. Dang, he's at that young, I think he's a, he's the second youngest guy on my list. It was that young, how good he's been and how competitive he is. And this is just a big factor, kind of a Joel disc, but it's a huge, huge boost to be up higher on this list because we saw him in the playoffs last year and the kind of game, the intensity brought on defense and on scoring and making big shots and making defensive stops is just everything you want to see from a guy you're trying to build a team around. And mm-hmm. so, and he's got all the tools. He's got all the, he's got the whole, he brings the whole package. So I, he's definitely at least number seven on my list. Uh, yeah, I got him a little higher on my list, actually. Um, My number seven, I'm also going to get flack from you guys for this. It's Jason Tatum. Uh, you know, he's only 19. That's true. I, he, I mean, he has plenty of room to grow. Um. But even realistically, he's only 26 still. So, like, he has his flaws. I get it. Uh, he, he's off and on in the playoffs. We, we see it year after year. I mean, like, we saw uh, the year they went to the finals. He was great. And then once they got to the finals, he was terrible. Um, last year was kind of off and on. Um, but I can't ignore the individual ex- success he's had, even just in the regular season. He's made the all-star team and all NBA team every single or I don't know if he made all NBA his third year but regardless he's made an all NBA team uh, or an all an all star team every year since his third year uh, he's averaging like 27 a game uh playing for the best team in the league um and yeah he's had great teams and the playoff success is not all on him but I can't ignore that he has had playoff success um and that's why I mean I think a lot of people would have him like closer to top three i mean some people have him as the number one in the mvp race i'm not there but i have him for sure at least in the top 10 i'm assuming you guys do or no no nah, he's not on my list and i'll tell you exactly why this is the perfect yeah. list to keep him off of you want to know why we're talking Jeez. about building a team around a player who in the last however you said since his third year has had a better team even since his rookie year, who had had a better team Built around him, but Jason Taylor. And for that, he's had a lack of success. And not most of the time because the team falls short, but because he falls short. Like you just said. Like we're talking about building a team around. He's had a team built around him. The, re- the reason why they're good, the reason why they're number one seed, is because he's got the best team built around him. And he's part of that because he's extremely talented. No question about that. But how are we going to talk about these guys that we want to have built a team around? He already has that team. He has that team. And actually has surprisingly little success to show for that. Anything less of what he's done in his career would be disappointing. Would it not be? With those teams he's had, would anything less be disappointing? 100%. But like I said, he's 26. And, and he's 19. He still has flaws in his game. But he, I mean, like, he still has like flaws. But like on a hypothetical level, and I know this is weird uh, to talk about, but it, we are talking about like the future and stuff. On a hypothetical level, he really has no holes. Uh, he, he's improved his playmaking. If he stopped shooting step back threes, he'd be an amazing shooter from three. Um, if he attacked the basket, you know, he'd average 30, no doubt. But he doesn't. He doesn't. But he he's doesn't 26. That's the point. All right. If okay, I, but you, okay, so you're better. Joe, better. Joe Mazzula, a big part of Joe Mazzula's philosophy is shoot a ton of threes. And he buys into that. And he shoots still a pretty good clip. He's not a bad three point shooter. But, I, I I think his skill set is top ten in the league, and if he can, and a lot of people do 
agree with me that he he has harnessed it. But if he could harness it even more, he could be really good, man. He, he could. He, the and and six, like what, lack of success. Like, when's the last time we saw someone under 25 win a championship, like, as the best player? I don't keep track to age that much. I, I, I don't know. I mean, like, Steph won his first at 26. That's pretty young. Giannis won his first at 26. Jokic won his first at 28. Though, that didn't come in the league with teams built around them the way that Tatum does. And both guys that had to really earn their marks and recognition when they got to the league. They weren't Jason and, Tatum going to And I think, uh, in I the, think in it's, it's – your argument is fair to criticize Tatum for, like, his standing in the NBA right now. But if you're talking about just building around a player, you got to have him on the list. He's 26. And he's still, I mean, and I know he's fallen short, but he's also had this, he's also had success individually. And it's not like he has had, like, he always goes to the conference finals, at least, you know. And that's better than Joel Embiid. And Joel Embiid's had some pretty good teams. <laughs> I mean, okay. As far as the Joel, yeah, but Joel Embiid's also just better. I'd rather build around Joel. But, okay, I mean, he's got time. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not true. outrageous to have him on the list. I certainly will not have him on my top ten. Um, probably not even like top eleven, based on some of the guys you've said. I don't have him on this, but he's good. He's amazing. Hopefully, hopefully he makes those leaps. I think he's still champ. Like I criticized Embiid, and this year he really looks like he's improved on some of that. But part of that I think is the relationship he has with Max. He maybe yeah. Tatum he's the guy that he has a better relationship with. Maybe coach. He's had again. This is another thing I have a knock on him. He's had some of the greatest coaches in the league, Ime, Brad Stevens, and uh, Missoula. I'm not a huge fan of him. Nothing against him. not a huge fan of him either. But maybe he just needs a kind of guy to help him see some different things he hasn't seen. And you're absolutely right. If he gets there, he's on the best. But right now, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. So my number six is, please forgive me, guys, Shea Gilders Alexander. I'm sure you guys have higher than number six. Um, he is young. At 25 years old, um, and he's awesome. He's an MVP candidate. Maybe he might win MVP this season. He's a great defensive guard. He's yeah. a good shooter. He's getting better at playmaking. And maybe I'm just darn right crazy. There's no doubt he should be on this list. I guess we could talk about him more when we hear the guys that I have above, the, above him on the list. I'm trying to think. Of, he's number six. I'm trying to think of five guys. I don't know. But yeah, he's definitely much higher on my list. Um, and we'll talk about him more. I'm sure if he's. Unless Marvin, do you have Shea at six? No, I have him higher. Okay, that's good. Um, now I'm interested to see the players above him. But um, yeah, he will win MVP. So that'll be fun to watch. My number six is Ant. Um, I think he was your seven, eight. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, everything you said. You know, future face of the league type potential. Obviously, he's got the he's got the MJ type attitude. Um, you know, he could score from anywhere. His passing has improved. His defense has been really impressive this year. Um, I mean, it's impossible to hate him. Uh, everything. You can hate I mean, him. He, Have you ever seen Hustle, Casper? Yeah, I was like, if you watch Hustle, like you can hate him. You mean Kermit? Is it Casper or Kermit? Kermit. Ah, I think it's Kermit. I don't know. It's something stupid. It's <laughs> Yeah, yeah, something like that. But even then, you still you still kind of like him because it's Anthony Edwards. But, yeah, but he's he's kind of a turd in the movie. Yeah, he is. He's a good actor. He's like one of those guys that could be like, I don't know, like Shaq to an extent. Like, <laughs> is in movies after his career. But yes. I think I don't know. I'm trying to think of someone. I'd like to see that. I don't know. He could he could be an actor. I tried that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I unfortunately don't have Edwards on my list, and I really hate it. I don't know why I don't. Uh, my six is Giannis, though. Uh, part of it, uh, he is 28 or 29, but he still has that drive. Um, and even this season, people are almost looking at the Bucks at having a bad season, which is obviously not as good as they've had, but they're still playing really well, and Giannis is still doing – great things averaging 12 rebounds and 30 points uh we know he can dish the ball also an elite defender 
Um, he And he just has that drive, too, which I think helps a lot, too, especially if you're building around someone. Uh, so I have Giannis at my six. Uh, he would be higher if he was younger. Um, but since he is 28 or 29 now, he only got to the six. Yeah, that's I have him as my five and for all the same reasons. Uh obviously I I still think he's probably borderline top three player in the league, if not definitely top three. Um but he's just he's twenty nine, so yeah. Uh I had to put the other guys above him. And he is twenty nine. He's won one chip. I feel like he's just so dominant when he needed to on defense and on offense. Yeah. I have him in my top three, even with 29. I can give him, let's assume I get about 10 more years out of him. There's, there's, he'd be in my top three, I feel like. As so far as other guys have all potential, he's, we know he's it. We, we know he's at that level. I can't, I mean, I'm not uh, disappointed with that or anything. I can totally see that. But just with some of the guys I have up there, they're younger and stuff too. So I just think I would personally rather build around them than Giannis. But, I'm not throwing Jay to anyone who's taken Giannis at a top three to build around either. Oh, yeah. If you took him one, I wouldn't shame you. Yeah. Well, maybe a little. But... No, but good to know this is a no-judge environment. Like, I don't feel well, safe. depending on the name, it's a no-judge envir- environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> well, my number five, you wonder who I love, Shay? Victor Wembanyama. I know Victor Wimanyama is one of the worst teams in the league. I know he's 20. We know he's hyped, and he's also lived up pretty much to all of that hype. The things he does, like sometimes, like, well, like he doesn't average 30. Okay, it's his rookie year, but like if you look at what other rookies have done, like the best of the best, best rookie seasons from players, like he's just, he's breaking all those records. He's right up there with all of them. He's looks incredible on defense and offense. I don't know and, and how young he is, only 20 years mm-hmm. old. There's, I would love to have him higher on my list. And the reason why he's not is just I kind of want to see him in a win- winning environment and maybe in the playoffs and things like that. But he's got to be at least top five players to build around in the league. Yeah, he's, my, he's my number five as well. Uh, like you said, he's broken records. Um, he's gotten qu- a quadruple double with blocks. We know his defense is insane. Uh, his shooting isn't the best, but I'm sure that'll come to him. He's still doing amazing at everything else, too. Um, but, yeah, I'm curious to see how he would look like in a winning environment. But even just considering the scenario he's in, he's still playing out of his mind, and it's really good to see. And for me personally, at least, I mean, I saw the potential with him coming to the draft, but I was not expecting him to come into the league start starting this hot. So that was a really nice surprise for me. Uh, and I think that's part of the reason, too, I have him at the five. Is It's just the future looks really bright for him. Uh, the thing about him, too, is that he – He's gotten so much better from the start of the year to now. That too. And like his defense has gotten better, his shooting's gotten better, just his feel for the game. And he's gonna he's probably gonna make it on defensive team as a rookie. I mean, it'd be really hard to see him not make it. Um he probably should be in contention for defensive player of the year. His team just sucks, but um I mean he's gonna win like six over the course of his career. So um yeah. Uh my four is Jokic. And that is, I get it, it's low. Um, but for the same reasons, for Giannis, he's 29. Um, and I think the guys above him, uh, the potential MVP candidates, and they're still so young. Um, I think if I had to build a team, I would pick them just because you potentially have like 15 more years of these guys, you know. Um, and, I mean, I, I think if Jokic was your number one, I wouldn't I wouldn't hate on it at all. So. All right, good. I have my number one. Okay, that's good. Hey, he's, guys, he's, he's still at. I don't know. Just let's be honest. Jokic probably won't play ten more years. He probably won't. So maybe, I, maybe I should have taken that into consideration. Yeah. Maybe I should have him a little bit lower. But like the way he plays basketball, it's just not even hard to build a team around him. Like you could just kind of just get a, a bunch of good players. Doesn't really matter what exactly they do. Probably well, want at least pretty good defender that's mobile just because he's not, he's still a good defender. He's just not mobile. And then pretty much you wanted some good basketball players like you would on any other team. I think a two threes, point guard, playmaker, but like he'll fit into it because he moves the ball so well and shoot a three. Like he's just so awesome to build a team around because you lose a lot of that. Like my play style like has to be built around me. Not that players do that intentionally, but they just naturally kind of have their play style. 
and even like the two goats, Michael Jordan and LeBron James, are that way. But like Nikola Jokic, you can literally just throw him into a system. Mm -hmm. I don't think he'd care if he averages 20 assists and eight points and 15 rebounds. Like, you can just throw him in there and he will just do what what's best to make the team succeed. And so that's that's why he's number one for me. But he is old and he probably won't play super long. So yeah. I can see that. Did y'all see the graphic of his like of his second MVP year, where like almost everyone's out of the league besides Aaron Gordon? Oh yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. That's, that's, that's exactly yeah. it though. Like you just need basketball players around him and yeah. he'll just do what he needs to do. And they were like the fifth seed that year, I think, or like, somewhere in that range. Just crazy. Like that's yeah, yeah he's just crazy. But at my number four, I'm going to go with Tyrese Halliburton. I don't know if Marvin has him at four, yep. two. Same he thing. He does. Because I was like, maybe he's in top three, because I haven't heard you saying yet. Either number four, Tyrese Halliburton. I was debating him between three and four. We, ju we just had I just had a conversation with Deacon. Like, we just know how good he is, and he can like, do everything except for defense he's not great at. And it's just like it's like how good the Pacers are, and you can argue that they, you could build a, a much better team around him. Mm -hmm. Like to fit him, I just like if you just get a few of the right pieces around him, like, that's just gonna be a team that's so hard to stop. They don't have a good rebounder right now. They're still missing some defenders. Like there's still a lot more that can be built around a guy with his skill set, and he just still elevates. Like it's just and even also just also taking into account his character, like, he just seems like a, like a kind of guy that a lot of his teammates like just enjoy being around. Very high energy, positive guy. Almost like LeBron, like people say the same thing. Like he's, um, he's also kind of like a forty-year-old kid. Is what people say, and obviously LeBron also brings like that hard, like almost a coach, like keep you accountable vibe. But at the same time, like just like a fun guy. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's why I have the number four. I just think the ceiling is so high. He made just the leap from last year to this year is just crazy. It's just getting better at his craft. Um, if he can shake his head, I, I want to know why. He's your four too, Martin. Yeah, he is my four too. Um, he's only twenty four years old. Yeah, like I said, well, I was six, debating him. Really, but... I was debating him. My three and four. My third guy is Shea. Um, I think one of the main reasons Shea took that is um, right now his team's better and his defense. I think was really that little thing that kind of took him over the hump over Halliburton. Is he's a lot better at defense. Um, no shade at Halliburton. Love Halliburton. He's a solid defender, but Shea's like an elite defender while being elite at offense which you can't get from a lot of guys uh he seems to be a pretty good leader as well i mean he's done a lot of great things with not the best teams either um halliburton i feel like he's a he's a super great team player and we've even heard things too that he's like one of the best teammates to have too which i think is really important to have for a team but i think shay is just a better all-around player um and that's why I would rather build around him. And he's shown that even with kind of just good basketball players too, he can uh, make a good impact as well. I can't believe you had Tyrese three spots over Shea, but oh no, it was two. Either way, that's pretty high for Tyrese. But uh, yeah, my number three is also Shea. Uh, for all the reasons you said, um, he's improved. I mean, last year he... You know, he made a significant jump, and he's made not quite the same jump, but a, a pretty big jump this year. Just his defense improved a lot. His shooting, he's he's almost 50-40-90, um, which if he could get there, that'd be awesome. But, um, yeah, he's he's the rightful MVP. Um, I don't know what else to more to say about him, you know? Yeah, he's crazy. I feel like I have to justify now. I have, so I have Shea at number six, Halliburton. Yeah. So Shea is just one year older than him. Does not really mean does not really mean anything. Um, I think Shea, like Mark said, he's a good uh, he's a leader. Like he's a good leader as far as like he'll take guys like he'll just take guys and ball them and stuff like that. I don't think he's a very vocal leader. I don't know if that's necessary, but I definitely think Halliburton's like as like being the guy. He's a better leader. I feel like Shea's a great leader if he was like a number two guy. I'm not saying I'm not saying he's bad, but like for being the number one guy, like sometimes there's a little bit of lack of like kind of just taking taking over like almost like vocally and stuff like that but i also respect that he's like kind of his attitude i feel like is he lets the game be talking for him he's like yo guys come practice with me it's all about like, just playing the game that's that's super important 
So no, he's, got, he's, he's got the Kevin Durant attitude. You know. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's a good comparison. Without kind of the negatives, uh, I mean, it's so far. Oh it's, yeah, he's not he's not toxic by JD, but yeah. yeah. And then yeah, so that's I just think Calvin, like I just said, like oh, Shea kind of already has that team built around him, and honestly, he's doing awesome. So like, it makes complete sense to take Shea for Halliburton. I just think Halliburton's team is also doing awesome, and Halliburton is still growing. Um, and I just think that his team could be a lot better. Mm-hmm. And he he would just be so awesome to build around. But either way, it's good. My Giannis, you guys know my number three is Giannis, or at least say he's top three. He's my number three Giannis. He is yeah, he's Giannis. We talked about it earlier, twenty nine. My number two is maybe he should be my number one. Honestly, we talked about how Jokic. He's my number one. It's like Jokic is already old. Won't play that long. My number two is probably y'all number two or number one. Luka Doncic. We talked about him on the Risers episode. Like a week ago, Luka Doncic is crazy in the regular season. He's if you look at him, what he's been doing, it would not be surprising if he had already won two MVPs. He hasn't won a single one yet. He might not win one this year, but it wouldn't be shocking at all if he's won two MVPs. If he's won the finals MVP, because he's just absolutely insane, and he plays so out of his mind in the regular season, he doesn't really even take almost like a little bit of a. Tr- like a step back in the playoffs, he almost somehow just elevated. Which is basically what Jokic does too. They put up unreal numbers, records in the regular season, and that somehow managed. They have the the audacity to play even better in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Like, what the? <laughs> just, you, just, like, you can't make this stuff up. Like, give me a look. I'd love to build it on that game. The audacity they have in the playoffs. Crazy. For real. Yeah, yeah he's but also I my have... number two. Yeah, I have Jokic at my two and Luka at my number okay. one. Uh, I think biggest thing, honestly, for that was just age. Both very similar players, different position, obviously, but both are out of this mind players, uh, very similar. Um, but Luka is younger, and he just has more road ahead of him, I think. So I just – I would rather build over Luka or Luka over Jokic, but either way, I'm not – nobody's getting hate for taking either one of those guys, for me at least, uh, one or two. Um, so yeah, you guys got the same one and two just swapped. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my one, obviously it's the one guy I haven't named that you guys had. It's the rookie of the year, Victor Wimbanyama. Um, no flaws in this game. Well, I mean, he, he's not a great shooter right now, but, uh, you know, projection in terms, in terms of projection, there's no flaws in this game. Um, he seems like he a good leader. He seems like he has the right mindset. He's in a great system in terms of like team coaching staff. Um, and his team sucks, dude. And he looks so good. And I can't wait. Uh, they're gonna. They're probably gonna trade for someone like Trey Young, and you guys are gonna hate it. And, but he's gonna he's gonna win MVP. He's gonna win like six MVPs. I mean, he he might be the future goat, and that's why. And I don't know if I could say that about Jokic. I think Victor has that potential, and I don't think it's ridiculous to say that he could be the GOAT, so that's why he's my number one. Yeah, I can't disagree with anything you said at all. It's just so ballsy to put him at number one with how little time he's yeah. played, but there's you're completely justified doing so, and it just makes it as crazy as all the hype he got going into the league about, like, if he's not at least as good as Olajuwon, KD, he's a bust. Like, so far, that seems completely valid. Is it crazy? Like, with your take, that seems completely valid. And I think it almost is based on what we see. I mean, that's he's exceeding team. my expectations in yeah. terms of rookie year. That's what I was saying, too. I mean, I knew he was going to be great, but I didn't think he was going to be this great this fast. Um, yeah. And then speaking to your things that you said, too, earlier, you <laughs> said he'd win six defense player of the years and six MVPs. Obviously, they're just kind of numbers to him. But do you think he'll join – those five guys that have won both those awards in the same year, do you think he'll do that? I think he'll do it like three times. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm overhyping him. I'm not overhyping him actually. He, he's that good, it. man. He, I could see it. Yeah, that'd be that'd yeah, be sick, bro. Spurs just has... gotta do their thing, you know. Build mm-hmm. a build a solid team. There's so many yeah. guys that are out there. They need to get one. Yeah. But I don't want them to rush it like Dallas did That's with Luca, because they because like Luca was so good out the gate they're like oh let's let's go all in 
right now, you know. And and like they're a solid team right now, but there's like the eight seed still or around that range. Um, and the West is still tough, but uh, I think they don't like slow burn it, but like you know, take your time a little bit, you know. Yeah, that's true. Like do what yeah. Indiana's doing, you know. Yeah, be nice. But yeah, but just to your all's point, the fact that you do this fast, it just shows like a mindset of understanding the game and adjusting. Even like some of the best players, the NBA players, will talk about like that first year. You're just still learning stuff. You're just learning so <laughs> much stuff, and and just yeah. the fact that he's already understanding that and like being able to take those leaps and play at a high level so early is just insanely promising for what he's going to do. What he's going to look like in three years when he continues to make all those adjustments and just getting more and more comfortable and growing his craft. It's just yeah. insane. He's going to be scary. I mean, he already is scary, actually. Yeah, yeah. Just think about how much scarier he's going to be in two to three years. Yeah, watch out Even for Even next Slender. year, man. Oh, for real. Watch out for Slender. But yeah, make, drop your takes. Who did we miss? Who would you have higher in your top 10 guys to build around and, and why? Um, but we'll see you all next time. Floater gang out.